Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, come on. I know we put way more coffee, put pots of coffee out there. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, that's pretty good. So we're in the last week of this thank you notes. And so we've been, we've been really going through and starting to look at some things that we should be thankful for and things that we shouldn't be. You know, we shouldn't have envy, and we talked about that last week. And the week before that, we talked about this culture that demands more when really we should just want less. And so we've talked about these things. Uh, this week, we're, um, we're going to be talking about God's provision, and then starting next week, we're starting a new series called Hope for the Holidays. Um, along with Hope for the Holidays, you know, there's one thing that if you're, in a, if you're in a, another country, you know, just put this out there, if you're in another country, especially one that's considered a third world country, that there, there is really no hope for the holidays. You know, we are that hope that we can be, you know, for our church in the Philippines. So we're going to be doing sponsorship, child sponsorship all month next month. So we're going to be able to, so we can sponsor a child in the Philippines. We really need to grow that and we need to put some, we really need to get over there and offer hope for the holidays over there. So next week when you come in, there'll be a table set up with children that need to be sponsored. Well, if you have a child that you're already sponsoring, there'll be updates there. And as well as, um, as, as, as well, just an opportunity to partner with the church is what we're doing over there. Maybe you don't want to sponsor a child. Maybe you just want to, you want to just Hey, I, I want to be able to help with something. I want to be able to donate to help and get the school finished, whatever it is. So, uh, anybody in here? Anybody in here ever been to a, on a cruise? Anybody ever been on a cruise? Anybody, when you've gone on that cruise, anybody, you ever, you ever heard of a ship steward? Anybody ever heard of the ship steward? Or, or maybe, maybe your cabin had a steward as well, a steward. You get on that thing, you get on the, you get on the, you know, you get on your ship and you get on the cruise line, you get down to your room, you go out and you just trash it, right? Because that's what happens every night. You do it in a hotel room too, right? You're like, I don't, I don't have to clean this up later on tonight. And so you go in and you, well, some people do this. Some people you trash and it doesn't really matter how bad you leave the room. You know, um, and the reason why I bring this up, because so often we have forgotten what God has given to us and how God has provided to us. It, you know, he kind of does it in the background. Just like, the, you know, just like somebody who cleans up your hotel room or just like somebody who cleans up on a ship. You know, they kind of, they clean up behind you. You know, the captain has given them this area. The captain has said, you are responsible for this area of the ship. I want you to clean these rooms. And so what happens is, is you go in and you stay there and you have your kids and your kids do things and you get the, the place is just a wreck when you walk away. And, I, and if you have a hotel stay, the place is not as clean as it was when you walk in. And on a cruise, you come back to your room that afternoon and what do they do? They leave you a nice little towel that's folded up into some sort of animal, right? You get in there, it's got this, like, you know, like there's a duck or there's a dog or something like that. You're like, man, these guys are talented. They are actually happy about taking care of what the, cabin, or what the captain has assigned to them. They're happy about it. They're like, man, this is, we want to take care of this. This is our job. And we'll even fold up an animal for you to make it to where you know that we actually enjoy doing this. It's so often that we, 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 we're not very good stewards of what, of what God has given us. We don't take very good care of it. You know, we don't, and then when some, you know, we always go, oh, well, somebody else ruined it, or somebody else did this to me, or somebody else put me in debt, or somebody else did this. No, 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 no. You're just expecting somebody to come and clean up behind you like they do in your hotel room. You know, that's what you're just expecting. You're just expecting them to come up and clean up, and God just, and that's not how God works. God is not your, your maid. He doesn't come back and clean up those messes that you left. You know, he, sometimes we have these repercussions that we have to live through. The room is usually better than when you left it. You know, that's how the hotel is. In this case, well, God has given you plenty. How is it that you're leaving it? What are you doing with it? And what it, what it causes us to do is it causes us to get in some trouble sometimes. We're going to open up to Matthew. And we can be this way with someone who cleans our hotel room, right? We know that they're going to come by and clean up after us and take care of us. Why is it that we're so afraid that God will provide for us and take care of us? And, and, and why is it that we get this way? God tells us something. And Matthew, he comes out, and, and really what he says... He says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is, not, is, life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So I'm going to stop there for a second. Think about this. Start thinking about this. Where do we get in our mindset? And this is not a message about tithing, so I don't want you guys to get into this and start going, oh, Mike's going to help us about money, because that's not what it's about. What I really want you to do is I want you to look at it, and I want you to start thinking about it. How much has God provided to you? How much has God given you? Start looking at what God has given to you in the past. 
How much has he given to you? And what have you done with it? And how have you managed it? And why is it now you're so worried about how much money you have in the bank? How much money you have here? What possessions you have? He tells you is that he goes, I provide for the birds. They don't worry about it. Why are you worried about it? Why are you so worried about what, what, what's going on? Why do you get to this point? Why do you get to where you're so worried about all these things? Don't you believe that I, you're, you're of more value to me than a bird? Don't you believe that? Isn't that? And that's what he tells us. And why are you being anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed by, those, by one of these. But, uh, but if God so... So close the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, he will not, won't he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Man. Definitely need to condense how many things I'm saying. I get tongue-tied as I go through and my notes are all put together. And you start looking at this and you start going, where is our faith at? What are we doing? O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. You worry about all these things, his clothing. You worry and worry and worry and worry. And we forget that God will take care of us. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself sufficient as the day is its own trouble maybe some of us have taken our eyes off of god and started to allow our worries to take over you know we've taken our eyes off of god and we've gone you know what my worries are going to take over and they're just going to run everything and what i have to tell you is you cannot and you just don't let the worries of life get your mind off of god that's really your first point is that you've taken this and you've gone off in this whole other direction and you, you let your mind just wander away from what God has given to you and provided to you. You've gone, hey, I'm going to go this direction. I'm going to go my way instead of God's way. We go, I'm going to go my direction. I'm going to go take care of what I want to take care of. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is, is, not, is not life more important than food and the body more than clothing. So, in 1608, there was a group of people that happened to be in England. And out of this group of people, they were on, you know, they were called separatists because they wanted to separate from the Church of England. They wanted to move away from there. And so this group happened to be on the eastern side of England. And, and back in 1600, if you wanted to separate from the Church, of, the Church of England, they would kill you for it. They would just put you to death. That was, that was the deal. You either went to church, our church, the way we want you to go to church, or we will off you. And so they stood out and they said, we're not going to follow this. We're going to go our direction. And so what they did is they sold all of their possessions. And they went across, they literally hiked across the country. They started walking and they got to the other side on the west coast where they met a ship captain that, overturned, that, that really overturned them to the government. As they got there, they get... The, the captain, who they've already paid, who they've given money to, he overturns them, and he, or he turns them over to the government, and he says, oh, by the way, you're going to go sit in this prison. And so they take all the money that they have saved up, all the money that they, had, they were planning on coming over to the United States with, but it wasn't called the United States at that point, all the money that they wanted to come over and everything, and they bought themselves out of jail and went to Holland. And in Holland... They started raising their family because Holland was a place where you didn't have to abide by the Church of England. And they get to Holland and they start, and they start growing and they start, their families are starting to grow and they start realizing that they're reaching more people. And what happens is they start looking around and they realize that their children are being raised as Dutch and not as English. You know, they're looking and they're going, we have Dutch kids now. You know, we're in a foreign area. Our kids are not how we want to raise them. Because that's, they also realized they were never going to make any money there because they could never get hired in a skilled working position. And so this group gets back together. And in 1620, they decide that they're going to make the journey over to America. They get in two ships. They get in the Mayflower. And they get in the Speedwell. And they start making this journey over to here. In case you didn't know, only one ship made it, right? 
The Mayflower makes it. The Speedwell, on its way over here, the crew started sabotaging it because they were under contract and they started drilling holes in the side of it and it started taking on water. And so they sold the Speedwell on its way over here and they loaded up as many as they could onto the Mayflower. And that was 121 people that they put on the Mayflower. And as they were coming over, they got to, they got to what we would consider Massachusetts now. And they got here in November. Now, anybody know what's happening in Massachusetts right now in November? There's more snow than, than what they were prepared for. And so when the pilgrims got here, they had very little food. They had very little, they had very little supplies. They had lost two of their own. You know, they, get, they says they got here, 121 left and 120 made it. Well, one was born on the ship on the way over. And so you start looking at this and you start seeing what's going on and you see what happens is so the Mayflower ends up here in November with 120 people on board light and supplies not expecting the coldness because it came from england and they thought that they would come lower that they would get better weather than what england was but they knew as they saw the as they looked out and as they saw the land they knew that god had delivered they knew that god had said i'm here and you, you, we've delivered and on november 9 1620 when they saw land william brewster led the group in psalm 100 he comes out and he says he looks out and he goes, look, God has delivered. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful for God has delivered. When God delivers, give thanks. And that's what he does in Psalm 100. If you read this, it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Guys, guess what we do at the beginning of service here? We, we praise, right? Unless you just sit there and go, I don't want nobody to hear my voice. I can't, because that's what I do. Because I sit there and go, everybody will leave, you hear my voice. You know, and, but that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to come in, all of the earth, come in singing, be joyful, make a joyous noise. You know, that's what we tell our kids, right? They run around and go, you know, they got the cymbals and they're banging on the drums. And you're like, man, who told you to make that joyous noise? It needs to go away. <laughs> know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his, gate, enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Think about this. They had just gotten here. They had just come across 65 days at sea. They had two people die. They had no supplies. And he goes, we need to give thanks. It's the first thing we need to do. We need to give thanks. Before we even get off of this ship, we need to give thanks. It's not in the history book, is it? You read the history book, they go, oh, they read Psalm 100. It doesn't say that. But they did. Before they even drew up the Mayflower Compact, they read Psalm 100. They gave thanks. When God does something good, they gave thanks. Now, when they get here, Squanto... And he's also known by another name as an Indian. But he's an ex-English slave. So the English had been making runs back and forth since the, you know, since the 1500. They come over, kidnap some people, take them back over, sell them for $20 each. You know, 20 pounds. You know, today's money, about $35, what they did back then. So they would sell them for $35, taking them back and forth. And Squanto gets this opportunity, he comes back. And when he introduces himself to, when he introduces himself to the pilgrims, he, when he, he wasn't very nice at first. He comes down and he says, I am the wrath of God. That's what he came and he introduced himself as. But yet, even the wrath of God still helped him. The wrath of God came down and literally said, and saw them starving, and saw what they were going through, and said, it's time for me to help them. It's time for me to get through this. And he taught them how to fish for eel. That's what he did. You know, the first thing, he taught them how to fish for eel. Why? Because you needed the eel in order to, for, you, for fertilizer. And he takes that fertilizer and shows them how to grow corn. And at the end of that first winter, there was 50 of them left. 50. Think about this. 112 of you show up. 120 of you show up. 
and there's only 50 of you left. What are you thinking? Are you thinking about giving God thanks? Are you thinking about going, oh, I've, I, I got I to gotta make sure that we tell God thank you. We got to make sure that we're, we're putting him first. The following year in 1621, after the harvest, the 50 remaining pilgrims and 90 Native Americans came together for a three-day feast. Three days. They did nothing else but hang out, eat, praise God, and acted with repentance. For three days. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, out of the, the four women that were left, they did all the cooking, and the guys still sat around and watched football back then. <laughs> they just kicked their feet up and watched, and they were like, but the, really, that's the case. The four, there was four women left. Can you imagine? Four women, <laughs> 46 dudes, you know, there were some lonely fellas out there. You know, that's just what it was. But that's the case. There was four of them left, and they cooked for three days. Mm. Let's fast forward some. And on October 3rd, 1963, President Lincoln comes out, and he declares that we need to have a day of thanksgiving. So he comes out, and he says, Thanksgiving and praise to our Father who dwelleth in the heavens. That's in 19, or 1863. Anybody know what was going on in 1863? Civil War. Civil War was two years in. Two years in, and guess what's happening is that soldiers are dying left and right. The Civil War was the most, it was most catastrophic war for this country. And they're dying left and right. Americans killing other Americans. That's what it was. Literally, brothers killing brothers over, over something that what were we, we were fighting over people that we all knew was wrong, and we knew what direction we needed to go. And we start looking at this, and you start going, he comes out, and he goes, it's time for us to give a time of thanksgiving and praise. In the middle of what was going on. In the middle of all of this, this pain and this sorrow and everything that's happening at this time, he comes out and he says, it's time for us to give thanksgiving and praise and to spend time in repentance. And he declared the fourth Thursday in November thanksgiving and that happened from president to president to president until the 1900s when they finally made it a holiday and in the great depression they moved it to the third thursday in order to make it to where you could shop a little longer and then they moved it back because i bring this up for a reason and, and i really want you to start thinking about this in the first Thessalonians, it tells us in 5.8, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. While everything was going on, Lincoln had the country stop and give thanks. While all this is going on, stop and give thanks. Hmm. Why isn't that true now? Why isn't it true now? Start thinking about this. The pilgrims spent three days in thanks. Giving thanks and praise. Three days. The country in the midst of civil war gives it a day. And now, we give it until 4 o'clock and then we have to head out to the mall. You know, we go, hey, it's, time for me to, it's time for me to go shopping instead of giving thanksgiving and praise. We forget that this country was built, was built by Christians from the start that we fully believe in god here and just because it's been washed away by some of these people that have been pursuing money doesn't mean as christians that we stand by and just allow it to continue to happen that we allow them to continue to push us into the stores because we're so convoluted by oh i got to go get this tv that's actually on sale right now you can buy it today for the same price that you're going to buy it for the day after thanksgiving we've gotten this mindset that because they're pushing us to go Oh, you got to go sell stuff. You got to go buy stuff. You got to go buy. You got to go buy. We've lost the values that this country was raised on and this country was founded on. And we've started to fall victim to, oh, I got to have all this stuff. I have to have it. The pilgrims had nothing but people around them to help them get through it. And they still gave thanksgiving. They weren't worried about going to the store. It wasn't like they had a Walmart down the way, and they're like, hey, can I borrow some money so I can go to the Walmart and get some supplies? No, they relied on one another. And they stood up for their values, and they stood up for what they believed in, and they started going out, and, and here we are, 
Christians now. Do you know if Christians were to say we're not going to shop on Thanksgiving, guess what would start happening? Stores would start closing. 80% of America considers themselves Christian. Stores would close on Thanksgiving. People would be able to get a, a day of Thanksgiving to give praise to God, to be able to give Thanksgiving and to offer repentance. That's what the day is about. Now we've turned it into National Prayer Day and Thanksgiving is Turkey Day. So we've turned it into. We've lost what we're supposed to do. Maybe things are supposed to change and we're supposed to start giving repentance like, we, like what the day represents. God, we are sorry for what we have done, but please forgive us and allow us to go through this. Thank you for giving us this year. Man, when was the last time you actually told God thank you? Thank you for what you have given me this year. Thank you for the meal that is on my table. And really, really meant it. Because so often you think that you've earned it. So often you look back and you go, oh, I, made, I, I did that. I did it. I made that money. No, God gave you the opportunity to make that money. You know, I was taught an analogy a few years ago is that all of us have been given a spigot. And that's exactly where our money comes from. You know, that spigot. So if you go to your house, you have, maybe you have the kitchen sink that's where your money's coming from. Well, just my analogy, kind of kind of work with me here. Maybe on the outside of your house, you, you know, you got the, you're, you're getting it from the hose. But guess what happens is that those pipes are being fed by the city, which is another supplier, right? They're being fed to your house from one person or, you know, from another, from another place. And that's how, you know, if we start following it all the way back up and you start going back up the pipes, guess what happens is that all that water comes from a reservoir. And that reservoir is God. And so just because you look at it and you go, yeah, no, 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 I get my money from X, Y, and Z company. Guess what? You take it back a little further, and you take it back a little further, and all of a sudden it ends up at the reservoir of God. It ends up back up there where God has been providing, and he's been doing it through the spigot that you get from X, Y, and Z company. But really, it's all come from him. That reservoir. And we've forgotten that. And we've forgotten that he allows you to have that job. He even allows you to have the day off. It's a national holiday. And what do you do? Nope, time for football. It's time for Thanksgiving. I'm not saying turn off the football game. Don't, don't go crazy here. <laughs> but what I am saying is I am saying let's remember what the day really is about. It's about Thanksgiving. It's about giving praise. It's about repentance. That's what it's truly about. That's what these pilgrims that came and they fought so much to get over here in order for us to have this day, they came across the sea for 65 days. Watch friends die. So that you could have religious freedom. So that you could offer thanks to, to God. So that you could do exactly what we're doing right now. Because guys, I'll tell you right now, if they didn't come over here, we're all Catholics. That's what it is. We're all Catholics. Guys, think about what God has already done. Look at all this history. And I know there's a little bit of history here, but I'm a history guy. So, you know, I know you got more dates and stuff than what you wanted. But I'll tell you, all of this is critically important. All of it is critically important. Give thanks in all circumstances, no matter what it is. In all circumstances. Whether you're sick, whether you're healthy, give thanks. That's what Thursday's about. It's not about going to get the best deal on a TV or on some clothes, or on this or that. It's not about getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning so that you can be at JCPenney's open, open, open. <laughs> Mervyn's. <They're... laughs> Too much TV, guys. It's gone now. <laughs> but that's what it is. You're standing there. You're just waiting. And really, think about this is that if you're out doing that, then who's got a hold of you? Does God have a hold of you? What are these earthly, these, these demons that's all been brought out, is that all out? These, these possessions that you're not going to take with you? All of this stuff, is that, is, is that who has a hold of you? Or does God have a hold of you? Which one is it? You don't know. You're right now because you're thinking, man, I've got to cancel my Black Friday plans i got to change that, because I can't go out and do this now after he's guilting me. But <laughs> as you're pursuing this stuff, as you start looking at it, remember, 
is that God gave you a day of Thanksgiving. He gave you this day. He didn't, he didn't want you to take it away with going shopping. He didn't want you to take it away with not giving praise. And he didn't, and he really gave us this day for us to really remember to give repentance and to go, God, thank you for getting me through this year. Forgive me for my sins and let me get through this next year. That's what the day is about. And people fought hard to get there. We have this opportunity to change. We can either take it and we can start making a difference in this world or we can allow it to just keep going. And all of a sudden, all the holidays are going to be gone. That's what's going to happen. It won't be Thanksgiving anymore. They'll just be gone. This day that God has made for us, this day that God has given to us, that every president, all the way up to this point, has said this day is important. This day is important to each one of us, and we need to remember that. And it's not important for us to go shop. Let's change it. Let's make a difference. Let's offer that repentance. Let's go, God, forgive me. And maybe we need to do that now. Maybe we really need to look at it and go, God, forgive me for the direction that I've been going, even the plans that I was making. Because if you were planning it, God says that you were already doing it. Let's change. This is a time for change. It can happen right now. And we can start doing things differently. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this day. This day of Thanksgiving. This day that we offer praise and we come to you and we go, we, God, we need repentance. We need to be able to say, forgive me of the sins that I've committed this past year. Forgive everything that I've done, the sins that I've thought about, the things that I've, I've looked at and said I want to do this, the temptations that I've been led to. God, please forgive me. Forgive me through the blood of your son by washing over me, allowing me to have this new life. Allowing me to be able to go forward every year. I know I'm going to make mistakes, and but every year I get this opportunity to come in and say, I'm sorry, and please forgive me. And I want to take that now. God, forgive me. Please forgive me. And allow me, and allow all of us to, to have this next year. God, thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to look back and start going that people have sacrificed and have given up so much for us to have this. They've given up lives for us to have this, this freedom that we call church. Oh, we're thankful. We're thankful for the meals that you're going to pl place on the tables this, this Thursday or even through the week. We're thankful for the praises that we get to shout. Maybe we do it in the car because we're afraid of people hearing our voice. But God, you, you're so worthy of our praise. God, you have done so many miracles and you've given so much to each one of us. And we need to take this Thursday to look back and reflect and just be thankful for everything that you have done for each one of us. Just look back and go be thankful for this past year on how much he's changed in us and how much he's gotten us through. The people he's brought into our life, the people he's taken out of our life. God, we are so thankful. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.